Hello, and welcome back to Living in the 20s, the show all about the 1920s. I'm your host, Joseph Shea. Today, we'll take a look at sports. We have an interview scheduled with Babe Ruth. After that, we'll look at the trial of Sacco and Vanzetti. Following that, we'll look at the influence of automobiles and airplanes in the 1920s. Following that, we'll look at movies in the 1920s and finish up with a discussion of the KKK. But first, we have Babe Ruth here with us today. Mr. Ruth, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, howdy, Joey. Thanks for having me on the show today. You see, I was born on February 6th, 1895. I was a starting pitcher on the Boston Red Sox from 1914 to 1919. My career record is 94 wins and 46 losses. I was then sold to the Yankees in 1919 and played with them until 1935. After a short stint with the Braves in 1936, I retired. Wow, babe, that's very interesting. Could you tell us a little bit about why you were such an influential baseball player in the 1920s, as well as some of your accomplishments? Sure, Joey. Well, first thing you have to understand here is that in the 1920s, times were changing. 40-hour work weeks were the norm. So people had time now to go out and do things and spend money on things that they wouldn't have been spending money on in past generations. Um, through the publication of mass media, people were able to find out what I was doing and it was, there was more buzz around it, you know, and people wanted to come see me play. Um, and, you know, they were publicizing about a lot of my historic accomplishments. And, you know, that just made a lot of people want to come out and uh, created a great atmosphere. Um, some of my personal accomplishments are um, I helped baseball help popularity explode because before I started playing the game, it was more of a you know, dull sport, but when I stepped in there, you know, I brought that power in there, and, you know, I'd, I helped baseball evolve from a low-scoring, um, not very powerful game to a high-powered, you know, batting game, a lot more action, a lot more home runs, a lot more scoring. And because of that, I was one of the first five players inducted to, to the Hall of Fame. Um, I was the first player to hit 60 home runs in one season, which is in 1927. Uh, I set the home run record with 714 home runs. Um, this probably won't be broken for a while. Um, and in 1923, I was the American League MVP. I was also known a lot for my charitable work, and I'm a seven-time World Series champion. Wow, babe, that's very interesting. Thanks for joining us on the show today. You're a great baseball player, and not bad looking either. Anytime, Joey. And I gotta say, you're pretty good looking yourself. You know what, Joe? You've been good to me, so I'm gonna give you my cap. Wow, thanks, babe. It fits great. I'm sure it'll be worth a lot of money one day. Moving on. A jury has found Nicolas Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti guilty of committing a double robbery and murder. They are condemned to die. Alvin Fuller, the governor of Massachusetts, has appointed Abbott Lawrence Lowell, president of Harvard, to investigate whether or not the men deserve lessening of their penalty or clemency. They fled to Mexico so that they wouldn't have to fight in a war. This could have give, given them a negative view to jurors. and. Mr. Lowell's job will be to see if the trial was conducted fairly. On top of this, it seems that there is no real evidence to convict the men. That is what their defensive attorney, Fred Moore, is arguing. The gun Sacco possesses uses the kind of bullets found at the crime scene. However, tests were not able to link the bullets at the crime scene to Sacco's gun. Furthermore, a hat was found at the crime scene that is supposedly Sacco's, but it does not fit him, and you know what they say. If the cap doesn't fit, then you must acquit. Even less evidence connects Vanzetti to the crime. Sacco and Vanzetti also represent different points of view. To natives, they are immigrants threatening their way of life. To immigrants, Sacco and Vanzetti represent victims of prejudice against newcomers. There is a lot of disagreement and inner turmoil within this country about the case of Sacco and Vanzetti. 
Here is a picture of the men shortly after being arrested. As you can see, they look clueless and not very happy. Once again, thanks for joining us on Living in the 20s, a show all about the 1920s. Next, we'll take a look at automobiles and airplanes in the 1920s. We will then look at movies in the 1920s and finish it off with a look at and discussion of the KKK. Thanks and stick around. On December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers showed that war of their man could fly. Their invention of the airplane surprised everyone. Poor people, rich people, and especially the middle class people. At first, it was not as great as some other inventions during the time because of how dangerous flying still was. But though various twists and turns, the airplane was able to become a great success in the 1920s and even gaining the rank of being one of the most important inventions of the 1920s. During the decade preceding the 20s, airplanes had been used in World War I for attacks, but its high instability and poor control make it less effective as other weapons of World War I, so it was tossed aside as an impractical invention. After World War I, the airplane started to become a hit again. At local fairs, airplane pilots would fly around in the air doing many tricks and stunts to entertain an audience. Gradually, the airline stunts at local carnivals become commonplace throughout America. Although the airplane had become used more throughout America, it was never taken seriously by anyone until the federal government developed the idea of air mail. The idea of using airplanes to transport mail quickly caught on. Instead of receiving long distance mail in a few weeks, one could receive it in only a few days. Air mail quickly became a success as air mail became more popular. Other industries become began turning to the airplane as for a frightening that it was much faster than land-based transportation. So the airplane quickly became an ingrudged, integrated part of American business during the 1920s. After using airplanes to transport freight became commonplace. The idea of airplane carrying people quickly held on. A few airplane companies began to offer flying people from one place to another for a price though. Usually it was fairly costly and only upper class people can afford it. But as flights become more common, price fell and it almost reached a point where upper middle class people could afford flights. Although the airplane did not catch on as quickly as other inventions of the 1920s did. It still caught on, and it surely did cut, catch on. During the 20s, many people began to do airplane stunts and tricks to entertain themselves. Various people would climb into, climb on airplane wing and start dancing the Charleston, or try and fly around in circles for a whole day. Airplane fades even managed to produce an American hero, Charles A. Lindbergh, when he crossed the Atlantic Ocean by himself in an airplane. The success of an airplane in the 1920s surely make, makes the airplane one of the most invention, important inventions of the 1920s.